Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.5 and Polychop Simulations OH58D Kiowa Warrior. Welcome to Tutorial 1, Startup. I've, you've probably seen quite a few other content creators do startup videos by now, uh, but I'm going to show you my procedure, and I'm also even going to cover a little bit of the the kind of mission setup that you might do uh, as a, a multi-crewed helicopter as well. Um, because, to be honest, the startup in, in the Kiowa is uh, quite simple, quite quick, uh, and so there's not really that much to cover, so we can dive a little bit further into the, the mission systems of the helicopter and how I might set them up for a mission as well. So let's jump into the cockpit, uh, and you will note that I've got the, the heads-up display, the, the pilot's uh, heads-up display installed on this particular helicopter. Uh, it's something that um, we haven't seen that much of, so I thought I would just throw it on so that you can all have a little look at that. I'm going to hide my pilot body, but I'll leave the CPG in place, and we'll begin with the procedure. Um, very nicely modelled, by the way, this cockpit. I'm a big fan of it. So, the uh, very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to confirm that we have FADEC and ignition switches in the ON position. We're going to make sure down here that our ignition switch key is turned. Very embarrassing if we don't have that on. Uh, next, we're going to flip on battery 1. And that will cause the, uh, the pilot's display, uh, the radio display, and the MFD to power up. Uh, we'll give it a couple of moments and the oral system will boot up and we'll start getting warnings. There we go. Uh, you're going to want to ack off the, the caution and the, the audio tone. Uh, you're also probably going to want to map this switch here to your HOTAS up for recall and down for ack. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recall those messages. I'm going to actually leave them on the screen right now. Uh, something to note is that the number of cautions and the number of alerts are always uh, displayed at the bottom here as well. So I've got 15 cautions, 3 alerts at the present time. That's all fine. I'm going to reset the MFD here so the flashing uh, warning has been disengaged. And just in preparation for engine start, I'm going to have the, uh, the NR and the NP showing up there just now. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is actually start the engine. Uh, I want to confirm that my FADEC is in manual. Note that when I, sorry, in automatic. Note that when I put it into manual, I get a tone warning me that the FADEC, FADEC has failed over into manual mode. Uh, I'm then going to advance the throttle out of cutoff and into idle. Um, you're going to want to note that as soon as you do this, you then have 60 seconds before the FADEC will shut down. Uh, you Basically, you have to begin a start within 60 seconds of doing that. If you fail to do so, you can just power off the FADEC, flip the battery off and back on again, and you'll be good to go. So, um, start is very, very simple. That's the throttle out of cutoff and into the idle position. I'm going to click and hold the starter switch for two seconds, and then release. And then from that point onwards, the startup is basically automated. Uh, now, you're going to get uh, a couple of audio tones and warnings. You can ack off each of those as you get them, and you're going to want to monitor your start here. You've got your TGT, you've got your RPM on the left, um, you've got your NG here. NG will stabilize between 63 and 65 percent. That's low rotor RPM, we'll cancel that out as well. And we're just going to wait for that start to complete and for the helicopter to stabilize. You can see rotors are turning at this point. So coming up to stabilize. And there we go. So the engine out caution is now gone. Engine is considered started and running normally. I'm just going to clear that caution there. And then the next thing we do before we run up is on the overhead here, uh, the essential bus can now go to run. The AC gen goes to on and the DC gen goes to on. We also turn on the fuel boost pump. Uh, and I'm at this time I'm also going to turn on the external lights. So we've got anti-collision and position lights in bright. Uh, that's kind of personal preference. Also, particle separator circuit breaker, which is pulled for an engine start, will now be pushed in. And we got another little warning there. We're going to act that off. Cool. Alrighty. At this stage, we're going to slowly advance the throttle until we get to full. 
low rotor RPM again. And now we're at full open. Uh, you'll note that the NR is at 99%. Uh, a couple of clicks up on the engine RPM trim will get us to 100. That's a good start and everything is working normally at that stage. Uh, you'll see we've still got some warnings showing up on the display. Uh, that's for the SCAS system. SCAS goes power on, yaw channel on, pitch and roll channel on. And you'll notice that at this time we have no further warnings showing up here. If I bring up the uh, VSD, however, we don't have... Oh, sorry, we do actually. Own ship position is showing at the bottom left. That would indicate that uh, the alignment process has completed. It can take up to four minutes for that to happen. Excellent. Um, at this stage, we can go ahead and power on all of our other systems. So over my left shoulder, uh, we're going to go radar detection and warning to on. There it is. L2 mum to on. IFF to on. Uh, is there anything else back here that I want right now? No, I think we're pretty good. Uh, I'm going to wait for the radar warning receiver to go through its full uh, startup here. While it's doing that, uh, I'll actually take a very quick look at uh, our, our route that we have just now. If I hit HSD and go to nav setup and take a little look at my route, uh, I can see that we have we have these uh, waypoints in the current route. This is actually not the one I want, however. I have one that I've stored in a data cartridge. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to HSD. No, actually, I'm going to go to a knit page. Uh, how do I get to the knit page? It's this button here, actually. I don't know why uh, we have two init buttons, and uh, it's this, this is the one that we actually want here. There we go. We should be operational in just a moment. Yo, cool. RWR is up. Actually, while while I'm doing this, I'll also I'll turn on the C C was, C was or however you pronounce that. Uh, and here we're going to go to uh, data loader on the init page, and this is password protected. Password is five eight delta. Enter. Funnily enough. And we're going to load mission now. I already have a JSON file in the correct folder for this particular mission. I'll cover this in a different tutorial, so just be aware that you have the ability to create these data cartridges and store them uh, in a, a special folder in your saved games. So if I hit this, it's going to ask me... Oh, that's the CMOS uh, powered up. It's going to ask me what I want to load from the cartridge. I'm going to leave everything selected and hit load, and we're now bringing all of that in. You can see that I get my radi radio frequencies straight away. And loading is complete. I could go back to the init page again if I wanted to. Actually, in this case, I'm going to go HSD, nav setup, and check route one. We can see now we have a completely different route for route one, and this is what I wanted to load. That's excellent. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do, though, is I actually want one additional waypoint on this route. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go next point, next point, and then add a leg. And I want 5W, enter. And I've now extended that route by one waypoint. That's exactly what I wanted. Excellent. I'm going to go back to VSD. I'm going to set my altitude bugs now. So for low, I'm going to have uh, 50 feet. And we get bongs because I'm already below that. For high, I'm going to have 300. And those are both set now. Flares, or the CMOS. Uh, I'm going to put that to bypass and then armed. So I in, I, in effect, have manual flares now. And you can see it just displays bypass on the screen. A lot of the time, you're probably going to want to have this in auto, but uh, for now, I'm going to leave it in manual mode so that I don't dump flares all over the ground crew. Okay, if we jump to the CPG seat, we can now go ahead and get the CPG all up and running. Um, He's going to want the MMS page up. You can see the system is currently off. We're going to move the mode straight into forward, and after a short delay, we get video. I'm then going to hit the slave button once to put us into manual, and then again to lock the mast forwards. Uh, and that's probably how you're going to want the, uh, the MMS initially during the course of a mission. I'm now going to verify my laser codes. If I hit the codes page, I can see all the ones I have set here. If I wanted to change any of these, I could do so by hitting the line select key and then entering a new code with the keyboard. Uh, in this case, though, I'm happy with these, so I can hit the code button again, and I'm back to here. I'm going to move the laser to standby, and I'm going to toggle it into actual laser designator mode. And that's that set up. 
Uh, down here, I'm going to go Master Arm to Standby, and I get a Standby Light. That means that the weapon system is powered, although it's not uh, immediately ready to use. Uh, I could bring up the weapon page, actually, and just confirm what I've got. I've got 500 rounds. If I didn't have 500 rounds, I could enter a different number of rounds into the counter, and I've got the option of adjusting reticles and things like that. Uh, I also have information about the rockets that I have loaded, uh, but that information is all correct. And then in the ASC page, I can confirm that my radar warning receiver is powered up. Back to MMS. Cool. Uh, something else that I, I can do is, actually, I'll do it from the CPG seat. We could check out our route. So if I go into HSD, we have an option at the top right called RMS, and this is the Rotorcraft Map System. If I hit this, I actually have the ability to have a little look around at our route. This is our current location. This line shows part of the route. I can put the system into slew mode, and then I can enter any position that I like on the top left here, and it will jump to it. So, for example, if I hit position and enter that 5W, I can review the actual position of 5W. I can see it's up here at the end of this uh, line here. If I wanted to go and check out 4W, I can enter 4W. It's going to jump down to waypoint 4 for me as well. So that can be quite useful. Also note that while I'm in this mode, actually it does it in the normal HSD mode as well, but I can have a chart background, or I can show the elevation data, or I can just show uh, the data that's been loaded via the cartridge, so things like zones and lines and stuff like that. Or I can have none, or I can go back to the chart. Uh, once I'm done with this mode, I can simply unslew, and it will jump back to my helicopter, and then I can hit HSD, and it will take me back to the HSD. Perfect. Uh, and I could also select actually which point I actually want to be flying to. Uh, so at the present time, I'm going to go 5W. That's probably what I want to reference just now. And then lastly, what I would probably tend to do is I would uh, set up my pre-points. Uh, in many cases, targets are going to be located either at a target point or at a waypoint or something like that. And it's quite nice to be able to queue the, the MMS directly to that point as you're approaching it, so you're not kind of hunting around for your targets. So if I put the MMS into pre-point mode, you'll see that I have a PPT button here. If I click this, I get my pre-points menu. Clicking it multiple times will cycle through all the different pre-points I've got. So I'm going to map into number 1, 5W, and press Enter. That's now number 1 in the pre-point menu. I could go to the next one and say I also wanted 4W, available as a quick access. I have that there. It actually appears with the name. Note that it doesn't have to be waypoints. You know, if I had target points, I actually currently don't, but say I had one tango as a target point, I could enter that and it would pre-point to that, but actually it's erroring out because I, in fact, don't have any of those. Uh, and then I could lock it back forwards. When it's time for me to use one of these, I can go into pre-point mode. I can pre-select the one I want so I've now got 3.5W, and if I was to now hit the slave button, it would immediately slave to that point. I'm now watching that point, and I'm ready to attack it. Um, but uh, yeah, when we're getting ready to take off, I'd probably just leave this in forward mode and slave the MMS forwards. Excellent. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, I can show you how this heads-up display works. There's not very much to it. We have a, uh, a brightness knob on the right-hand side here, and then we have a bit test button. If I press the bit test button, it will enter a bit test and confirm to us that the display is working. We got a pass. We had symbology. Apart from that, the only symbology that this system will ever display is either gun, rockets, or stinger aiming information. It's not used with the Hellfires, and it's also not used with the APKWS. So if I go weapon select switch to the left just now, I get a gun cross, that's the gun selected. If I go weapon select switch to the right just now, I get the rocket's reticle, um, and it's showing you all the different positions where a rocket would land, depending upon its position in the tube. Uh, and I could then kind of act off that, and the display goes off entirely. And then I can bring myself back to the VSD. Um, Got the option of displaying the MMS video in the background of the VSD. I think that's a bit distracting. I w actually wouldn't bother to do that. And then you can see here, uh, the waypoint that was pre-selected by the CPG is showing up here, and I've got steering cues to it on my VS, uh, VSD. Yeah, VSD. I guess one last thing we'd probably do in preparation for mission is check all of our frequencies. But uh, I'm not going to cover that just now. Unless you're in multiplayer, that's probably not mattering all that much. 
So, that is my kind of extended mission-ready startup procedure. Uh, that's everything you need to get ready and fight in a Kiowa. And as always, I'd recommend flying this in multi-crew. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, thank you all very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. If you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew by clicking the Join button below. It's a small monthly fee and it really helps me in creating this content. Big shout out to those of you who've already done so, the current members of the ground crew are on screen now. Uh, you have some small benefits, of course you're you're helping me, but uh, you also gain uh, access to a Deepak's ground crew Discord server uh, where we can all kind of interact. Uh, I've also been uploading uh, mission files that I've been using in some of my tutorials uh, and we also occasionally fly together. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.